What is a log graph and why is it called that? Well, here's a graph, more specifically a linear by linear graph, great for measuring how a relationship between two values change over time. If the x-axis represents days and the y-axis represents calories, you can measure how many calories you've eaten each day or anything else you wanna measure. Useful, but not useful in every situation. Let's look at this graph. It may look just like the other one at a glance, but there's an important distinction between the x-axis and the y-axis. On the x-axis, the first notch is 10, the next is 20, then 30, 40, and so on. But over here, the first notch is a 10, then the next is 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. This is a log by linear graph, or a semi-log graph. It's very useful for measuring things that grow exponentially. It doesn't matter if the linear side is going by ones or twos or fives or five hundreds. All that matters is that each notch represents the same distance as the notch before it. Likewise, it doesn't matter where the log side starts so long as each notch increases exponentially. So let's get into why this is useful in situations where a linear by linear graph is not. Imagine you're a musician and you've grown massively over time. Your first year, you made $1,000, the next you made 4,000, and then the next you made 20,000, and then you got a record deal and made 135,000, then 500,000, and then a million. If you were to plot these points on a linear by linear graph, where the bottom is each year and the side is the amount of money you made, you would get this. Looks impressive, but all it says is one thing, which is that you had exponential growth. But what if you had a hunch that in July of every year, your record sales seem to go down? No matter how high they were for that year as a whole, in July there's some dip. How could you possibly know that by looking at this graph? Well, let's plot these same points on a log linear graph. We get this. Much better. Now, instead of comparing the highest number to the lowest number, we're able to compare low numbers to low numbers and high numbers to high numbers. We can see, in fact, that despite the massive growth, there seems to be a dip in the middle parts of each year, or at the very least, a slowing of growth. Typically, as things grow, so does the amount of things that you need to add or subtract in order to make a difference. If you cut down 10 trees in a field with 20 trees in it, you've removed the amount of trees by 50%. That's huge. If you were to cut down 10 trees in a dense forest with thousands or tens of thousands of trees, no one would really even notice. This effect shows up all the time in nature, which is why we often use log scales in order to measure things. The pH scale, which measures acidity, the Richter scale, which measures the energy of earthquakes, the half-life scale, which measures decay, decibels, which measure the volume of sound, particle distribution, the brightness of stars, transparency, astronomical body sizes. All of these things are measured using a scale where increasing one unit increases what is being measured exponentially. But here's a question, why the name log? Well, it comes from the term logarithm, which is a mathematical function that makes this possible. The log function itself is actually pretty simple. It's just an exponent that's asking a different question. Here we have two to the power of three equals eight. This is asking us that if we send two to the power of three, what do we end up with? Oh, well, eight. Now a root is asking us what this number is. So what number to the power of three equals eight? Oh, um, well, two, and we arranged the equation to look like this. Now log is asking us what this number is. It's looking for the exponent. So two to the power of what number equals eight? That equation is arranged like this, and it would be read like, what is log base two of eight? The answer being three. So an exponent equation asks us what the answer is, roots ask us what the base is, and log asks us what the power is. Here's what they're called. Here's the question being asked, and here's the equation that represents them. So if the log graph represents exponential growth, then why is it called a log graph and not an exponential graph? Well, it's because the log function is asking us the right question. On a graph, we're trying to figure out where to put our dot based on the data we have. That's the question the graph is asking us. Basically, we want to know which one of these notches we should place our point on. Well, with a log function, we know what our base is, it's 10, so these are increasing powers of 10. And we know what the final number is, that piece of data we have, and here it is, it's 100. So the question is, which knot do we put our data on? And oh, the answer is two, so the second notch. 
To call this an exponential graph would be to imply that we know where our point is, and we know what our base is, but we don't know what the number on the left is. Well, to call it a root graph would be to imply that we know where the dot is, and we know what the number on the left is, but we don't know what our base is. Interesting to think about, but not really what this graph is asking. Log functions are also very useful for plotting curves on a linear by linear graph. So here's a typical linear graph, and it's got a log function plotted on it by using this equation. This may seem daunting at first, but it's really quite simple. The variable we're changing is the variable b in this equation here. The x and y variables in the equation are just the x and y coordinates on the graph. You can see how as I drag this variable around, the curve goes kind of wild. The variable b is just defining the relationship between the x and y coordinates. So if our variable b is 2, as I've defined it with the slider here, then if the x coordinate is 16, then our equation is 2 to the power of what equals 16, which gives us 4, right here. And that goes for all of the other points as well. For example, if our x coordinate is 4, then our equation is log base 2 of 4, meaning 2 to the power of what equals 4, and the answer to that is 2, which gives us our y coordinate. As always, thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and liking, subscribing, and commenting give me a huge boost.